Hey friends, today we're looking at Linus security and auditing software. This is one of the best tools you can use to find out what you can do to harden your system. And I want to send a special shout out to Greg. He's a big reason I'm doing this video today. So today we're looking at Linus. It's basically an auditing, system hardening, compliance testing tool. Very easy to use. I'm going to go ahead and install it on an Arch-based system or a Manjaro-based system. You'll do Pac-Man, and then you'll do capital S, and then you'll do L-Y-N-I-S. We can check the version here and see if there's a new update and then we can easily clone a new updated version if we need to but for the most part it's going to be about the same. So I wouldn't suggest going through all that trouble. Just go ahead and perform a audit system scan. That's going to apply to most people. We'll go ahead and go through that on my Pine tab. And one of the things is with those system D tools, a lot of it is about sandboxing those. That's not necessarily something you have to worry about with as a desktop user, but if you are a server user, you do have that option. So some of these responses that you're getting here, they may not all be necessary, and some of them come up as suggestions, making it more plain English what you should do. So there's a lot of things that are partially hardened, other things are already hardened, and then we have suggestions and other options that we can look up manually in order to find out what's the best way to harden our system. Like I said, not everything is going to apply to your system. You may not need server level hardening. You may have a desktop that only you are basically the user of it and you don't have to worry about people pen testing your system remotely, having open servers accessible to the world, and so not all not all of this is going to apply to you. Another thing here, I have a tip for you. See how it says USB devices? One thing you can do is, and I had someone actually ask me about USB security lately. What you can actually do is, when you're not using your USB devices, something to blacklist the USB drivers of devices that you're not using. So if you don't need a specific driver or firmware, you may want to blacklist that when you're not at your computer if it's a high security environment. Something that can prevent someone from, say, plugging up a Pi with, uh, for example, poison tap in it that would then try and take over your system. So there's people out there that are going to take advantage of some of your hardware's default auto mount, auto run type features. And you can actually block some of these things using different tools and also simple things like blacklisting drivers. All right, so the scan has finished. We have all the information that we need. And like I've mentioned, you don't necessarily have to change all of these things. This is a really deep hardening look at your system. And they even take the time to score your system. It looks like this one has come up as 65 out of 100. So there's 233 tests performed. There's no malware scanner. This is something we're going to cover in future videos. So I'd like to take the opportunity to look at what the results are. And at this point, we can then in future videos go over some of the solutions here. And I'm going to go over a couple of them today. For example, we're going to take a look at the suggestions for SSH because SSH is something we're using right now in order to run the Linux scan. And because I have SSH open network wide on my network, I prefer to have it as hardened as possible. You may be in the same position. You may want to go and take a look at the remote access type features. Those are the ones I would focus on first. So if it has different servers that you happen to run on your server or desktop and you need those 
remote access tools and servers and clients, you should probably harden the remote access ones first. And then only after that, take a look at some of the more local related hardening and optionally go ahead and fix those as well. So we'll go ahead and simply open a new terminal and we will harden SSH configuration. All we have to do here, it says the details is allow TCP forwarding, set yes to no. So what that means is we can do as simple as changing this response and we will open a new window. I will SSH over. And now that I've SSH'd over to my Pine tab and just another one, I'm going to go ahead and use this separate window to go into my SSH configuration directory. And I'm going to go ahead and apply all of the different suggestions that were made by it. And over here, what we see for kernel hardening, we can go into the ETC directory and change some of these in our SYSCTL.conf. And at that point, we can harden it there as well. And over here, we'll simply type no. And then we'll just search for the next one down. This one as well. We can look for this and go to Control W allows you to search in Nano. I figure most of you guys will be using Nano. You can also search in VIM. Well, you can just use the colon slash and then you'll find what you're looking for. So we'll go ahead and uncomment this. That makes it an active setting. Then we'll set that to 2 in order to ensure not too many people are going to be looking at it. Next, compression. Let's go ahead and search for that and see if compression, okay, what we have here uncomment that and we will then instead of delayed we will just do no. log level uncomment and then what we'll do is set verbose here and what that does is it'll add verbosity which is basically enhancing the amount of information that you're gonna get from a given log so we're gonna save this in the temp directory because I need to use sudo to actually overwrite the actual file so we'll go ahead and hit that and next we're going down here you wanna see where we're at we're at max auth tries we'll go ahead and search for that max auth and then that and what we're gonna set this to is the suggestions that are offered here so we'll go ahead and set that to three and next we're gonna go to max sessions which just happens to be the one directly below as you can see it says instead of 10 set it to 2 we'll go ahead and just do 2 there and what that'll do is it will allow us to change the amount of sessions available and we'll go ahead and leave it at port 22 because I only have it available in my local area network I don't need to worry about changing the port yet but that's just a suggestion for anyone else who might actually have theirs open worldwide you don't want port scanners or you know attackers probing looking for port 22 to use an SSH based vulnerability so we're gonna go ahead and ignore that suggestion next we're gonna go to allow agent see where that is okay uncomment that when you uncomment something you're allowing that setting to be read so we're gonna go ahead and type no we'll go ahead and save it again and at this point we are writing it to the temp directory. I'll go to my temp directory. What happens here is I need to use the sudo command. Okay, now I have a root shell. And what I can do now is replace 
the slash temp slash sshd config and put that in my slash etc slash ssh slash sshd and then underscore config at this point it overwrites it and next how do I apply all those settings we just did well simply do system control restart sshd now it's restarted ssh applying all the changes that Linus asked us and suggested to us so we have that all done there next what can we do we go look through here we can change the properly rotation of our log files I'm not going to go through that but I do want to kind of cover some of this stuff so slash etc slash issue basically what that file is is it's going to issue something to people who connect so you may want to use their suggestion and all it says here is Arch Linux but instead for example I could do slash etc slash issue and then I could say warning this system is logged and then at that point I can simply write to the file and that means if I have a system that's going to use that etc issue file say telnet or something else uh, it's going to print out that warning message and let them know that this system is not one you want to mess with it's not one you want to attack so sometimes that can stop an attacker in their tracks I mean it's unlikely but there is that benefit that some attackers may be stopped with a warning message so let's go ahead you can see other things that it suggests that you enable uh, of course you can even further restrict file permissions let's go ahead and open this link and just see what their suggestion is here so file permissions and essentially we're using the free version it's not going to give you all of the information here but one great thing is a lot of times we can take advantage of Google or DuckDuckGo and if it gives you information on something you can simply Google that for example this one here harden the system by installing at least one malware scanner to periodically do file system scans this is something I'm gonna cover in a future video it's too broad a subject to do here but I do look forward to sharing that with you so keep in mind this is an initial check over of our system we're gonna be implementing some of these we just went over some of the SSH suggestions but we're gonna go over some of the tools that allow us to inspect our system and basically check over some of the most important files in our bin directory check out for hidden processes check for checksum changes and other things that are out of place so that is what some of these RK Hunter and check root kit do we can then check that out in the future video and if you ever need to refer back to the scan you just did simply go to your var log directory and here you can see some of the records of your Linux scans simply do well less is a better command we'll do Linux dot log we can see some of the records of our scans and you can see some of the details inside as well but it is a very valuable tool Linus is going to really help you out with getting your system hardened and like I said all you need to do pay close attention to the scans mainly look at the results and then what you should do is check out their page on a subject and then do further Google searches in order to find how to fix that hardening suggestion and then after that you can simply go through yet another scan and you can rescan it and ensure that you fixed some of the issues that were there listed for the hardening suggestions and especially pay attention to the ones marked in red so that's what I have today guys make sure you check this out if you get a suggestion leave a comment let me know what is that suggestion are you curious about it did you apply anything do you have any tips for others I'd like to hear your comments below so make sure to like share this video with everyone you know and I will be back later with more on how to protect your Linux system.